U.S. media coverage has been running hand-in-hand hand with the revolutionary ideology of Kiev's interim leaders. And brushing aside contradictions to its reasoning, the White House is relying on verified data. Or, as Anastasia Churkina finds out, the interpretation of that. When it comes to the crisis in Ukraine, Washington seems to have one word that's become a favorite. The facts are the facts are the facts. Mm. But just because the word fact exists, it doesn't mean it coincides with the truth. The truth is there in the social media and across the pages of newspapers and in the video of televisions for all of the world to see. In the social media and in prominent American newspapers, the U.S. built a case using photos of random men in random places in attempts to prove Russians had come to Ukraine. This was used as proof by U.S. officials. It's just that the photographer who actually took the pictures begged to differ, and a retraction followed. In the videos for the world to see, major news networks ran with footage of alleged Russian military presence on the border with Ukraine and Kirch. Except, well, there's no actual border in Kirch. There's only water. They know exactly what they're doing. These are the, the, the most, these are the master propagandists in the world. Then the story about flyers being passed around in Ukraine's city of Donetsk for Jewish residents to register with a pro-Russian government or else. The U.S. ambassador to Ukraine dubbed it the real deal, America's Secretary of State referenced to the scandal at talks in Geneva, until a Washington-based advocacy group present on the ground in Ukraine confirmed the flyers were fake. The government knows that the people, if they get the real facts, as they did during the Vietnam War, for instance, when they learn a different narrative, they can become a powerful political opposition to U.S. government policy. To make sure events are interpreted in a manner convenient for the U.S., educational videos like this one are put together. If you're confused about how we got here, you're not alone. This State Department video plays up an alleged Russian intervention that was never proven and features a cartoon-like and false version of the Crimean referendum ballot misrepresenting the choices that were actually given to the people. Actual options were to reunite with Russia or restore Crimea's constitution of 1992, giving it more autonomy but remaining part of Ukraine. While the U.S. says that what it's spreading is nothing but facts, the facts uh, of what's happening on the ground are out there. They may be out there, but apparently far from here. Anastasia Cherkina, RT, Washington, D.C. American journalist and author Chris Hedges believes it's not the first time Washington's tailored a storyline to win a battle. Unfortunately, the press in the United States has become very anemic, if not utterly subservient to power. There is, uh, as with any government, an official narrative uh, that they seek to disseminate to the public. The last thing they're interested in is an honest debate. Uh, you know, they have, uh, they will pick and select, uh, choose facts and sometimes uh, even uh, incidents that are not fact, to perpetuate the narrative that they seek to disseminate. And let's go to the lead up to the Iraq war. They, they would leak, the White House would leak stuff to the New York Times, and then they would cite the New York Times as uh, an authority. This is, this is business as usual. The narrative about the Ukraine uh, is certainly an, an example of it, but it's hardly an isolated example.